Good afternoon and welcome to this Hive webinar, Freelancers Unite, the Power of Co-ops and Joint Working. Um, I'm glad that you can join us this afternoon. Um, I'm just going to do a short introduction and then I'll hand over to my colleagues, um, Asia and our speakers. Um, so my name is Petra Morris. Um, I work at Cooperatives UK with the national membership organisation that represents the cooperatives across the UK. We're here to promote, develop and unite cooperatives. Um, and we represent about 7,000 different cooperatives in all shapes and sizes in the economy. Um, so this Hive webinar is part of a series of Hive webinars we're currently delivering. We've delivered some before Christmas and they're available online as recorded webinars and we're doing some more over the next um, few weeks. So if you want to learn more about cooperatives and different types of cooperatives, do check them out. Um, the reason we're running these webinars is that we want to promote cooperatives and we have support programs that will help start new cooperatives, including the High Business Support Programme, um, which is delivered by Cooperatives UK in partnership with our member, the Cooperative Bank. Um, we've been delighted to work with the Cooperative Bank over the last six years and have um, supported lots of cooperatives over that time. Um, and um, I will talk a little bit more at the end of this webinar about what support is available um, and we'll also contact you. So this webinar is being recorded, um, so it will be made available and it will go online after this session. Um, there's no video or audio for participants. So if you do want to ask any questions, please use the chat box and put your questions in there and we'll try to respond as we go through the webinar or we may have some time at the end of the webinar to pick up any specific questions that you have. Um, so without further ado, I'm delighted to introduce our first speaker. Um, I'm going to hand over to um, Asia. Asia Hack works at Chapel Street Studio. Um, she's fairly new to the cooperative movement and she'll tell you a little bit more about cooperatives um, and why they're a good option for freelancers and self-employed and workers. Um, and that's enough for me and hope you enjoyed the webinar and as I say do use the chat box to post any questions. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to the Freelancers Unite webinar. So today we're going to be talking about why it's advantageous for freelancers and sole traders like many of us to be part of a cooperative or create your own cooperative. So today we're going to be hearing from different speakers. So I will be representing uh, Chapel Street Studio and I work there as an agency lead. So I'll elaborate on that a little bit further. And then we have Stephen Flower, who is the co-founder of Open Data Services and Cooperative. We have John Gibson, who is the director of Note Productions. I hope I've said that correctly. And then finally, Petra is going to be talking about what support is available from the Hive to start a co-op. And lastly, we will reserve some time, um, if you won't run over, to have some questions from yourself. Okay. So um, what are co-ops like yourself? So I've, I'm fairly new, as Petra mentioned, to the co-op uh, movement. I've only just joined in, in August. And prior to this, I always thought that co-op was just a bank or a, a shop on the, at the end of the street. And I thought, OK, you know, it's, it's funny because they always seem like such a serious business. And I wonder how do they operate, what do they do? But that was all that I knew about it. It's until I joined Chapel Street is when I found out it's much bigger than that. And what it stands for is, is significant and is so, so much more than I had anticipated. So again, a, a co-op is a business or organization that is controlled by its member who have a vested interest within the business and the success of their business. So again, this varies from people who are potentially customers of the business, employees, residents or suppliers. Essentially, every single co-op within the world adheres to certain cooperative principles and values. But before we go on to the cooperative values and principles, I'm just going to play a short video that explains it extremely well as to what a cooperative is. Just bear with me. Ownership matters. 
It gives people a say in the things they care about. Did you know, if you were a member of a co-op, you are also one of its owners? Originally founded by a group of working class people who were fed up of having to buy poor quality food, co-ops are just as relevant today. They are found in every sector, from high street retailers to farmer controlled businesses, cooperative pubs and credit unions. They are tech platforms. They deliver social care. And they're making a huge difference to people, workers and communities across the UK and the world every single day. From the outside, co-ops look like any other business. But inside, they are very different. They are owned and controlled together by the people that are closest to the business. Employees, customers, residents, suppliers, not distant shareholders. These people, the members, have an equal say in how the business is run. And they even decide what to do with the profits. And cooperatives work. There are thousands of different co-ops in the UK and over 3 million worldwide. Some of our most famous brands come from cooperatives. From champagne and parmesan to Lurpak butter and bird's eye peas. There are even fan-owned football clubs. Co-ops contribute billions of pounds each year to the UK economy and boost UK productivity, innovation and entrepreneurship. And they work for the millions of members who together own the UK's co-ops. Cooperatives give people, in fact all of us, more control over the things that matter. Because ownership matters. Um, Stephen, you've got your hand up. Did you have a question? Okay, great. Just checking. <laughs> so, like I mentioned, every single co-op in the world operates on these core values and principles. So I'm just going to delve a little bit further in the next slide. So again, all the co-ops are owned and controlled by its members and essentially their whole purpose is to benefit its members to ensure that people who are actually involved within the business benefit from it so this involves its customers its workers suppliers and the wider community around it it is a very democratic way of running your business so every single member has their own say and contributes their ideas and how the profits can be used for the business. Every single member, the third point is every single member contributes financially in some way, sort of form. So again, either purchasing products, either working for the co-op, or again, um, identifying how the profits are going to be spent. The co-op again is an independent business and is controlled by its member. It offers education and training to everybody involved. So many of us struggle to find that support even in our businesses. So when you're part of a co-op, you get those opportunities to develop yourself and to develop what cooperatives actually do and how they benefit you and other businesses. One of the other things that cooperatives are fantastic is that they like to not only um, help to improve themselves but support other co-ops as well and finally a co-op supports the community that it works with so not only are you helping to improve yourself and the members within your own co-op but the community that is around you and around your business so a lot of people when they think about co-ops think that this is probably a business that's got a lot of social aims but financially does this make sense why should i opt to be a business within who adopts a co-op model do i necessarily think this is going to be successful so during the pandemic we've all suffered you know my i myself as a as a small business have uh, prior to the pandemic you know business was doing well and when the pandemic hit it was quiet 
And during this time, you are wondering whether or not you're going to make it or whether or not you're going to be successful or not. And while, as I became part of Chapel Street Studio, it helped me become a, a more stronger person within my business and to be able to offer what I have with a, a wider section of other businesses. So just some facts around this is that for, um, co-ops are four times more likely to seize trading. So less likely to seize trading, sorry, apologies. So for example, any other business within this difficult time has actually stopped trading. But if you're part of a co-op, you're going to be four times more successful, which is incredible. 60, 68% of co-ops uh, that had growth ambitions before the pandemic, 73% of those are still have the same ambitions. 15% have actually grown from, from those um, plans that they had for their co-ops actually increased. 92% of co-ops have actually identified clear benefits of being part of, um, of the co-op and it's helped them to deal more effectively within the pandemic as well. And then 2020, the cooperative economy grew, grew by over 1 billion with its turnover to 39.7 billion, which is incredible. Again, within the pandemic, a lot of the co-ops said that they really benefited from being part of this model purely because they had a strong and loyal membership. And also people within the pandemic felt really passionate about supporting local businesses and independent businesses during this difficult time. So allow, I'm just going to be talking a little bit about Chapel Street Studio. So Chapel Street Studio came together when a group of creative individuals said, okay, we've got some fantastic skills. How is it that we can work together to make sure that we are growing our business? So the group came together in 2014 and essentially they were passionate about sharing their skills, their knowledge and their contacts and using that to grow their businesses and creating more opportunities, not just for themselves, but for other people like them within the Bradford uh, city area. We chose to obviously adopt the cooperative model, a uh, cooperative consortium model, because this allowed us to all have our independent identities, but also be able to work together as a co-op and offer our services within um, under the agency banner. So here's some uh, pictures that we have of us kind of collaborating. This is our Chapel Street Connect event that we hope we actually run every single month where all the different associates and members sort of come together, share ideas, uh, you know, um, give some feedback on how we're running things and how we can potentially improve things. So that helps us then to develop our strategies and our processes moving forward. So you might be wondering, how does it actually work and how do we come together? So here's a, a, a little kind of diagram to show all the different businesses, uh, some of the different businesses that are part of Chapel Street Studio. So my business is called um, Ospia Digital Marketing Consultancy. So what we and what I do is obviously provide social media, digital marketing, uh, website design services. But being part of Chapel Street Studio, it's allowed me to be able to, if I need a graphic designer who is very specialist in creating um, graphics for the website or creating social media posts rather than outsourcing it to anybody else, I know I've got reliable people within the network who I can connect with, who can help me with certain projects. Not just that, but via Chapel Street Studio, we can all work together and pool our resources together to go for big contracts, big projects, because we have such a specialist group of people, um, which is incredible. Carolyn um, is a, a very accomplished photographer. Again, she is uh, working on a Born in Bradford project. Again, you know, having someone like her within the community is great. She brings her own set of skills and then she can kind of share those skills 
uh, on any given uh, new project that we have with clients. We then have Claudia, who's the, the co um, you know, co-founder of the uh, agency and how do they provide printing services. So we have all these amazing people within Chapel Street who can then break down any given project that we've got coming in. So here I'm just gonna uh, talk a tiny bit about the different projects that we have worked on. So we worked with the British Science Association. So British Science Association ran 200 free events in Bradford. So they needed somebody to create uh, their marketing campaigns, to do printing for them, to do distribution for them, um, to ensure that we are marketing their event within the, the Bradford region. Now, had they not worked with ourselves, they would have had to employ multiple different agencies to run point on all those different things. And that's what they said to us. They said, this is incredible. We cannot believe that you guys exist. And we were able to come to just one company and you were able to do every single thing to them, uh, for them. And we can only, or we were only able to offer that purely because we all pulled together and um, shared our expertise and they only had to liaise with one point of contact to, to deliver that. And then we also work with the uh, WOW Festival at the South Bank Center. And again, this was another fantastic project for us. Uh, this was for uh, Women of the World Festival that, was, uh, that we ran. And again, we did a number of things for them, such as, uh, Mark, social media marketing, marketing strategy, press and PR, print design, contract publishing, photography, all that with our, just being part of our agency. So again, we're able to deliver all that because we all pull together and work together. So it's it's been incredible. So, Chapel Street Studio, why did it make sense? Why, why did it make sense for us to be a co-op? At the end of the day, we want to be able to work together with people who are similar to us, who have the same passions, who've got the same ideas. But again, we want to make sure that we are sharing those opportunities and making ourselves um, a lot stronger in the process. We also wanted to, you know, as, as creatives, as you know, we're very precious of our work, right? We, we, we want credit. We want to make sure that we hold on to what we do. So this allowed us to have our own independence, but also to be able to work under the, the wider umbrella. We also wanted to be um, one of those, uh, those co-ops that was able to deliver the first workspace that was offered for all creatives within the Bradford region. We wanted to stay true to Bradford because that's where we're from. And I know that a lot of people probably forget about Bradford, but it's an amazing space. And you know, if you're ever around, please do come check us out. And this allowed us to find people who are like-minded, have somewhere where they can come together and again, give legitimacy to what we want to do, which is good help of the people, but not just that, that allowed us in business sense to access grants and loan investments for social enterprises as well. And again, I cannot stress this enough, how important it is to have that wider support network and movement because when you're an independent small business or a freelancer or solopreneur, that's something that you really struggle with because you know, you're know you in isolation, you're away from everybody else, you don't have somebody who you can share and bounce ideas with, with the co-op, you have friends, you have co-workers who you can collaborate and, and share that with. And uh, how is it that we benefit from being part of the co-op? Like I said, uh, prior to me joining Chapel Street, I'm someone who loves working in a team. I'm somebody who, who thrives off that conversation and that banter. I've always um, previously worked for other people. So starting my own thing it's it's quite daunting and scary and you think oh gosh you know where do I start who do I go to for advice and being part of Chapel Street allowed me to do that to to come together with people who had similar ideals as myself who wanted to be um, quite supportive make who wanted to make a, a, a difference 
And again, it allowed us to be part of something bigger, build something a bit more meaningful, and most importantly, supporting one another and creating or being part of projects that are mutually beneficial, not just for the agency, but for all the different freelancers who are part of the agency. So it's it's incredible, really. I cannot stress this enough. Um, again, just to sort of, uh, circle back is this is us at chapelstreetstudio.coop that's where we can find us you know we're always that happy as you can see when we're working on our laptops uh, so you know that's like a constant look but 100% uh, I would recommend for you to think about this model as a small business and as a freelancer so on that note I'm going to pass on to uh, Stephen so Stephen is going to be talking about uh, open data services and his cooperative and how they're doing things. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you. That was really helpful, really interesting. Uh, I'm going to share my slides. Um, okay, now I will. Here we go. The inevitable bit where I'm trying to slide the, slide the shares <laughs> <laughs> whilst talking. It's impossible, isn't it? Here we go. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, uh, my name is Stephen Flower. I'm a co-founder of Open Data Services Cooperative. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our story from a group of freelancers to the cooperative that we are now. And I think it does um, share and uh, build on some of the really positive points that I should talked about with Chapel Street Studio as well. So um, uh, about us, well, we, um, we're an organization uh, and we help people publish and use this thing called open data. Um, so it's you know, open data is a thing that's happened for many years now, really. And we, we're really specialist, as the name says on the tin, open data services. We help people and people are often in organizations uh, either release data openly for, 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 for various reasons or then and then use that data for various reasons. And there we are at Salford Lads Club on one of our many in-person meetings that we've had as, the, as a cooperative. Um, we were formed in 2015, uh, it's four people, and we formed a company, uh, a workers cooperative. And we've grown to, I think it's 23, forgive me. We have a new person signed today. I hope she's on, the, on this uh, webinar to learn about what we do. Um, so we've grown steadily but surely uh, over that time. Uh, and everybody that joins the cooperative is a member of staff. And then uh, after a short probation period, they become a, an owner member of the organization as well. Um, we've always worked from home. I just added that as, as we were talking in the pre preamble of this one. We've always worked from home. We're spread across the country uh, from, from Scotland down to London, from across, from across, et cetera. Uh, and we have one colleague who escaped and he's in New Zealand uh, and he still owns the company and he's, he's the night shift. So he does the magic work overnight, which is really helpful. So we're, we're 23 people in the company. Um, and as I said before, most of us were freelancers or contractors before joining this co-op. Um, but increasingly, people are joining us from academia, from other organizations. And, and we find it really interesting when we recruit people, uh, the value of, of talking about us as a cooperative and why, why people want to join us to do the work that we do but also want to be part of this, this, this uh, joint venture. So a lot of us were freelancers, uh, but increasingly a number of us are from other backgrounds. So uh, what do we do? Uh, we work on lots of initiatives, often with the word open in, um, whether it's about ownership of com companies or contracts that go to, uh, contracts of work that come from government or international aid and humanitarian responses, or even where the grants go from National Lottery and, and other organizations. And we work on many initiatives to make sure that there, there's transparency about this, this focus, this point. And we do the technical, often boring work behind that to, to make the data real and, and such things. And behind or around these initiatives, we work with lots of organizations. Here's a, just a snapshot from today. Um, World Health Organization, you've probably heard of, and the World Bank. Uh, Gavi, uh, who are very involved in the in the Covax response at the moment, we're working with them. And Equal Care Equal Care Cooperative is a is a is a local uh, to Manchester, where I'm based, a local uh, ish cooperative that uh, we're working with on on data and transparency as well. So we have a lot of clients and lots of initiatives that we we work on. Um, and what are we? Who are we? So those people, those, those nice pictures I've shown you. 
we're, we're very specialist people. We work, we have very particular skills that we, we combine together. We could be uh, software developers or system analysts, data policy or business analysts or, or documentation writers and such things. So really skilled, somewhat niche skills that we share and have. Uh, and we bring those together as the cooperative. But um, uh, that, that's what we are and what we do. And, and the, the real value of what we do, though, is that we work as teams. So, for example, um, the, 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 the open data project called 360 Giving has a tool called GrantsNav, where you can find all that data on who's given a grant to who. And I'll share the link, actually. It might be useful for those looking for grants, for example. But what we do, our team, we, we make the data standardized. We work with the National Lottery and others to publish that data. And then we, some of our team, provide the tool to search the data. So we get great value um, in our own skills, but in our joint enterprise as, a, as an organization to, to make these things happen. I think a context to this, I think, is really important. Uh, I mentioned that a lot of us were freelancers and such. And in this world that we work in, that we work in, those organizations are really set up and really familiar with the idea of consultants or contractors. Um, and it's, uh, play the violins a little bit here. This can be a, this can be a fragmented, fragmented and lonely existence, by which I mean, you know, oftentimes you find yourself working on this contract, going on to the next contract, to the next contract, and there might be really interesting pieces of work, but you're you're not there for the, the longevity might be might be gone or the collaboration uh, is there. So I, I will be clear: some of this is quite rewarding and arguably lucrative in in some senses, but that that real ownership of the work is lost when you're when you're in this world of contracting and consultancy. So that that's the world we've operated in, and and so the reason we we. One of the driving reasons that we started the cooperative was to build teams, as I've mentioned, but also pull skills and get some resilience and to, 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 to get away from the, the boom bust, the cycle of contract after contract and try and build some, some long-term sustainability and, and really vitally build an organization that we owned and that we could be proud of. Um, I think this is the best photo that I've got. So we'll just dwell on this one for a bit more. Um, but yeah, pooling skills, Building resilience, this is what it was all about. It wasn't just about how many more contracts could we get because we, 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 were, we were all working already. Um, so what happens then is really interesting. So we, as I mentioned, we've been going for six years. This is who we are, as I explained before. We're highly skilled people. We do all these things. But what happens when these highly skilled people running a co-op, there's suddenly a load of other things to do. And those other things we all jointly share and run and do and enjoy and debate and discuss as well. So whether it's running payroll or uh, sorting out contracts, having staff welfare policies, building, planning, worrying about capacity. We suddenly got all these things that we, we're jointly sharing. And I think it's really, really great. It's really interesting. It's a big, big jigsaw puzzle that we're putting together. But... I really enjoy this idea that we've got our skills that we're, we're really valuable, but the other skills that we're developing by running the co-op are becoming uh, just, just as useful and just as uh, helpful to us as an organization. So that's the things that we're doing to run the organization that we are. And lastly, I just wanted to leave you with really, really some thoughts about, so what are we learning from being a cooperative? What, what, what are the things over the last six years as a, as a worker-owned cooperative have we learned? And for me, there are there are there are three three key themes for our cooperative. Three theme, I can't say that. Three key things, themes that come out of this. Um, first of all, it's 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 really a theme of shared understandings. So uh, it, it's quite straightforward lo uh, logistically to form a cooperative, to form a business, and say you're cooperative, and Coops UK can help you with that. But the challenge, the theme to, to understand each other and to have a shared understanding is a, is a, is a real long term process. Um, and we really enjoy that and relish that about trying to, to see differences and talk and discuss and find ways that we can not not by consensus, but by other ways to, to agree, to understand where we're going, what we're trying to do. And that's a really invigorating part of a co-op that we're no longer disparate freelancers, but we're, we're jointly in this together. I think it's, it's really great. Um, what another theme that is really key for our cooperative is we're reflecting people's, the owners, the needs. 
So we, uh, as Aisha mentioned, there's no external shareholders. There's nobody else trying to determine what we do. We're user-led. We're here to, to, to really reflect the needs of the people that own the business. Um, and that, again, that's really important. That's really helpful. And it builds on the shared understandings that we're developing and have developed. Uh, and lastly, and crucially, it's, it's, it's about stability and sustainability. I mentioned we formed an organization to, to, to jointly pull our skills, but we've been going for six years. We're, we're in a very healthy position to recruit new people. And that's both from the quality of the work that we do, but also this foundation of understanding each other, reflecting each other's needs. So that I do think leads to, and can lead to real stability and sustainability. Um, of course, I could talk endlessly about all the things that we do specifically around these, whether we have collective policies that we have, for example, parental leave policy we developed, uh, we, we're all paid the same, we have equal pay, we have flexible working patterns to suit people, and we all have permanent contracts. We, we, nobody's on a short-term contract with us, we, we, we're all here for the, for the same amount of time. Um, I could talk about all these other things and many others, but for me, those three pillars are really important as the outcomes for the, for the co-op. Um, so that, that's about us and what we do and why it was really vital to form an organisation that we own. Uh, and I think the last thing to leave you, leave you with is that we've also got six years of team photos. Some of them, as you've seen, were really bad. This is the worst one. And I don't know if you can see it on the screen share. I have no idea who that, that person in this photo is at the back. That person isn't part of the co but maybe one day they will be. So that's about us and what we do. And uh, I look forward to any questions. And by all means, uh, contact me directly. And uh, uh, if you've got any more uh, questions specifically about the nature of our organization or the or how we set up such thank you and i'll stop sharing there we go thank you stephen that was that was really interesting i loved how you um shared those different concepts and how you guys came together that was that's brilliant. Uh, but I also love what you do and how you kind of, and the idea of stability, I think a lot of the time people think that there is instability within the co-ops. And I think that's brilliant how you share, you know, well, everybody's on a permanent contract, we're doing really well. And, you know, it's a very niche thing that you do, right? It is a niche thing that we do, but, uh, and we could have all done, done this work individually, as I said before, as freelancers, contractors, but, we do really get value out of being this, this joint organization that we share on our own. And as I was saying before, it's really interesting to talk to the World Bank or the World Health Organization about us as a co-op and what is a co-op and in that context. And I think I think that's really helpful, really, really invigorating to do too. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna hand over to the man here who's got the the most cool sounding cooperative name which is john gibson for from felt note 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 productions <laughs> over to you john thanks Aisha. <laughs> thanks very much so i'm John Gibson, I'm one of the directors of Felt Now Productions, and I'm just going to talk you through our experience and, and our journey. So this this is what I'm going to talk you through. So who, who are we? Who are Felt Now? Uh, why do we exist? What do we do? Why we're a co-op? What the Hive did for us? And what we found as being the benefits of, of working together. So first of all, Felt Now Productions, uh, we are a not-for-profit cooperative of comedians from the northeast of England. Uh, we're collaborating to create more comedy in the area. Uh, we're, we're also actually a community interest company, uh, so that means we, we've got a commitment to the community as well. Uh, and I'm only disappointed that uh, my presentation isn't as humorous as Stephen's, but uh, uh, being a set of comedians, but never mind, we'll, we'll talk you through it. Um, so why do we exist? Well, we were created by COVID in 2020, uh, not directly, uh, but, but what happened was that COVID shut down all the venues. And if there's no venues, there can't be any comedy. Um, so a group of us got together and said, okay, what are we gonna do about this? And 
what we decided to do was put on some online comedy events. So we started selling tickets for these and they were really successful. And we thought, you know what, we could, we could, by pooling our skills, we could create something that addresses some of the other issues in the Northeast uh, comedy scene, not just the immediate problem of, of COVID. So that brings us on to more on why we exist. So some of the things that we identified were that there's very little comedy in the Northeast. Um, it, it, it's very light on comedy. And what that means is if you're a comedian in the Northeast, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to travel to um, further field. And that means you, you incur more travel expenses, or overnight stay expenses. And what it means for new acts is it's difficult to come through because there's, there's not enough comedy going on to, to basically hone your skills and learn how to do this. Um, for audiences, it means there's you know fewer events. So people aren't, don't get, have access to comedy and there's that lack of community engagement with comedy because uh, of the shortage. And overall, what that means is the Northeast is just not a great place for comedy or comedians. And so we thought we'd, we'd tackle all of this. So what is it that we actually do? Uh, so this is what we do. Uh, there are four main strands to what we do. So we do comedy, we do outreach, heritage, and we do things for our members. So this is the kind of thing we do. So on comedy, we do what you'd expect. We do we put on gigs, and we put on gigs that are local to the Northeast. We do it with local comedians. We, uh, our cooperative is local comedians. So we have a policy of only using local comedians, and we do it in more venues than currently uh, than was the case. And we get out to more communities. We've got a lot of working class, rural, disadvantaged communities in the Northeast. So we get out to those guys to um, bring comedy to further afield. We've also launched, uh, launched a, a video on demand service that we very cleverly called Netflix, which has no relation to its, its uh, more prominent cousin, uh, to share the content of uh, the comedy production of uh, Northeast comedians. Uh, we also do outreach. So we do community workshops to bring comedy into the community, give people experience of what it's like to write and perform comedy. Um, and we provide comedians for charity events so that uh, they don't have to pay money to have access to comedians to come along and generate money. Uh, and we also celebrate the heritage of the Northeast. So the Northeast has a, a, a proud heritage of, of comedy. And we promote that through our social media. We've been commissioned by Northeast um, yeah, t sorry, Tiny Weir Archives and Museums to produce a series of podcasts, so we're doing that. And we also do talks on uh, comedy in the Northeast. And for our members, well, we're generating uh, more well-paying work, which means less travel for them. We also are putting on new act nights so that new people coming through have a chance to hone their skills. And we're actually specifically developing new comedians as well by giving them comedy training and their first paid work. And we also provide services for our members. So professional headshots, uh, venues, rehearsal spaces, and training and help with uh, PR as well. So that's what we do. So why, why did we choose to be a cooperative? Well, right at the start, these are the kind of things that we, we w knew we wanted to do. We knew we wanted to work together to transform the Northeast comedy scene. We knew we want to provide outreach into communities and deliver that wider social impact. And we, we knew we want to do it uh, using local talent and develop more local talent. And we knew we wanted it to be owned by comedians themselves to generate that buy-in and to, for it to be based on a membership fee, so show commitment. And we wanted it absolutely not to be about profit. We wanted it to be, you know, we didn't want it to be about directors getting rich. Uh, hence why we went down the community interest company route, as well as being a co-op. Uh, so what I've done for the purposes of this, uh, which we didn't do at the time, but it was interesting exercise. I just looked at the uh, cooperative values and the cooperative principles. I'm not going to talk you through them because some of them you've already been through. And what I've done is just taken what we originally intended to do and map that onto the co-op values and principles. Um, and what, what you find is that we have an amazing amount of overlap between what we want to do and how co-ops operate. So all of these 
you know, all of the values are things that we we actually em want to embody. And that was fantastic. The, the core principles, as you can see, the majority of those have absolute one, one relationship with what we want to do. The only two that are remaining on there are the education and training to develop the co-op and co-op works and supports other co-ops they weren't something we set out specifically to do but you can see they are part they are absolutely well within the bounds of of our um, approach and our mindset so th there was a huge amount of overlap with what co-ops stand for and so that's why we went down the co-op route and to do that we went via the hive and so the hive was extremely helpful in getting us the the um support we needed so one of the first things we needed was support and understand how to complete financial forecasts as i mentioned we're fairly new so we just completed our first year of trading so um back when we were uh, starting up we really needed some help on um completing these financial forecasts and i got us that support so we knew what to um what to do and how to set things out they also provide us support on how to articulate and measure our social impact. As I mentioned, we're also a community interest company. So th that was something that we really struggled with. And then lastly, they provide us the support on actually becoming a cooperative and helped us through that journey to make sure that we became a, a, a co-op. So that's why, and what benefits have we found? Well, specifically for us, we found that we, you know, we share specialist skills. So we happen to have a set of really good uh, skills within the, the comedy community. Uh, we've got IT specialists, we got people who are experts in, in uh, PR who can, you know, do press releases. Um, I've got project management experience and there's other people with, you know, a video and sound production experience as well. And what it means is we, we created a, a Northeast comedy brand so as opposed to just a set of individuals, we now have a brand we can we can stand behind. And we, so far, we've got over, uh, sorry, almost 4,000 followers across our social media accounts. And we're getting absolutely great coverage on uh, radio and print and online media, which is you know fantastic for the events that we put on. And we're able to support each other. There's a lot of volunteering going on at the moment. As I say, we're still fairly new. Uh, and volunteers also help with uh, not just running the organization, but help with gigs and the social media accounts, uh, and also uh, have trained other members in the skills that, that they've got. And what we're finding now is that our, our members are, are pointing people towards Feltnout. If, uh, if they're contacted for a potential new piece of work, they're saying, well, actually just go straight to Feltnout. And we're getting bigger contracts. In the summer, we programmed the comedy tent for a music festival in Cumbria. And we, as I said, have been commissioned by Tiny Way Archives and Museums to create a series of podcasts. These are things that, you know, just wouldn't have happened previously without working together. And it's opened up brand new opportunities. So we've opened up uh, a weekend comedy club in the area. We've got lots of new comedy venues where there wasn't comedy previously. Uh, we started our community outreach sessions, doing workshops. We sold 2,700 tickets, and we've generated £56,000 worth of work directly uh, given to comedians in our first year. So, you know, we're really pleased with that. And we're really pleased with how the, the co-op mechanism has allowed us to come together and, and generate that. So that's, that's what we found in relation to us specifically. But if we look at what it means more generically so uh, and hopefully these are the things that people can benefit from rather than just talk about us as in an individual organization we found that you know we were generating more work for members so as a as a as a cooperative we could generate more work than individual people uh which you know benefits everybody we had more clout you know, at working together, it becomes a, uh, an organization that that um, can actually do things that you couldn't do individually. And so, you know, we, we do have a, it's difficult to define clout, but we definitely have more of it. Uh, we are a stronger brand. So rather than a lot of individuals, you know, people can really get behind the Feltnout brand in the Northeast and understand that Feltnout means comedy for, for the Northeast. And it's given us much better PR. 
you know, people can get their heads around, oh, there's a cooperative of comedians. You know, it, I say people, I mean, the media can get their heads around the fact that there's a cooperative of, of comedians working together to to put on events. And that that generates much better than, uh, much better, you know, PR and, and media coverage than just an individual doing something. So there's, uh, there's power in that working together as well from a, a media point of view. And we find that, we have the collective support, you know, that uh, we're supporting each other. We support each other and run the business, but we support each other with skills and basically working much more closely together than would ever have been the case if we'd just been this fragmented, fragmented bunch of individuals. And that is my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, so much. I love the way how you broke it down. Um, broke down what you did, how you were formed in line with the cooperative principles. So that was fantastic. And it's amazing. You're very, you're very, very new. And normally when people think about the pandemic, it's usually like, oh my God, you know, it's it's come out of um it's come out of uh, nowhere and it's affected my business. But you obviously found an opportunity and pulled together all these amazing uh, people. I must say, uh, John, I was expecting a joke. I was expecting you to tell something yeah. that's going to be killer. And, you know, we're just here laughing. I mean, we have you here and no yeah. jokes. It was you know. it was straight down the line serious. And I'm sorry. When I saw Stephen being so relaxed and jokey, I, I thought I've, I've, done, I've, I've, got, I've set the wrong mood here. But <laughs> never mind. It's, it's done now. We, we are at, at least with, you know, we're the most positive thing to come out of the pandemic. Let's 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 just take that away. For sure, hundred percent, and I love that you you found this particular niche, and you found that there was clearly a need, and that's how you guys were formed. So that's amazing. I mean, we felt the same here in in Bradford, as you know. With Bradford, we kind of get forgotten because we're so close to Leeds, right? And everybody's yeah. like, it's all about Leeds, but you know, we are pretty 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 special. You know, we're pretty important people here in Bradford, so we felt like there wasn't a space here to uh, help the creatives within Bradford. You know, they had to go to Leeds or Manchester, all the big shiny yeah. cities to get that support, being part of those networks. And we thought, okay, you know, we want to have a space where creatives within Bradford can come together. And I'm so pleased that all our members have that connection to Bradford. And I think that that kind of keeps us all together, really. <laughs> like you with, the, with all your comedians. So yeah, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not going to comment anymore because I don't want to put my foot in it. I've I've already not been funny enough, so I don't want to. I don't want to compound it. Sorry, I'm, I apologize. I apologize. I'm putting undue stress on you. It's supposed to be a relaxing webinar. I apologize. Uh, so on that note, I'll I'll head over to the lovely Petra so she can give some more information about how we can get support from the Hive and how you know creative amazing people just like ourselves can decide that this is the way that they want to move forward with their with their businesses and their services over to you Petra thanks Asia I hope everyone online has been inspired as I have been by those incredible cooperatives um, I think what we've seen is um, lots of individuals coming together with um, expertise and skills um, and particularly niche um, skills and that the cooperative has really given them the model and the opportunity to work more collaboratively and to improve their businesses. So some great um, stories, some very varied stories. Um, and uh, I, I've been really inspired and really um, a great opportunity to be on this call. And thank you, everyone, for, for joining me on that. Um, I just wanted to check whether there was any more questions in the chat. There were a couple that I think were responded to in the chat, but... Um, just to pick up on those, um, I think um, there was a couple of questions from Naomi. I think she was particularly asking um, um, Asia really about how the cooperative works in the sense that obviously there are individuals um, who have their own businesses, but they're also part of the cooperative. And I suppose essentially how does the cooperative make its money and how do they take money out of the business? Um, I don't know if you want to say anything more about that, Asia. I know you responded in the chat, but it might be interesting to other people as well around that. Um, absolutely. So how it works is, I think Naomi asked the question, first of all, is we're all um, 
are we all private businesses? Do we have our own legal structure? That, that's absolutely correct. I myself am a, a sole trader and we have limited companies uh, who are independent freelancers who are part of the uh, consortium of the uh, Chapel Street Studio. So the other question I think Naomi asked was about um, membership. So in terms of membership, we're actually not paying any fees. How we all contribute is with our time. Uh, so we are either volunteering our time or selling our services through um, the agency. So being part of the co-op. Now, how it works is, for example, we've got a contract that's come through and um, that is, you know, something that we feel like we can deliver as Chapel Street Studio. So we will put a proposal together, go for that. Um, we will connect with the team within Chapel Street Studio to see how many people would be interested in, in taking part of that, who's got the time and capacity. We put the proposal together. Once we win that proposal, then obviously Chapel Street Studio will have a bit of a cut of, um, of that for managing the um, project management side of things. And then all the other freelancers and small businesses within the cooperative will get um, pay for their services so yeah essentially you you dictate you know what your rates are and then and the cooperative kind of puts that product uh, that proposal together and then you bid for certain opportunities and what's fantastic is and i was sharing this with the with the panelists uh, prior to the webinar starting is like we are we've currently got a project with the nhs and if you get a chance definitely check it out it's uh, Healthy Minds in, in Bradford. And again, you know, currently we are leading on mental health here in Bradford for pooling together all these different services within the region. And we've created the brand identity for that, the website, all that is done by Chapel Street Studio. And being part of Chapel Street Studio, I've been able to be part of, of, of the project as well in a, in a small capacity. and just as an independent um, small business who's just starting and very new, you know, going for those bigger opportunities can be a bit daunting, can be a bit scary, but being part of the co-op, you know, right, okay, you know, if there are certain gaps, I know that I can count on somebody, you know, that those kind of uh, uh, expert specialists, we can pull, ask them to come on to this project and, and share their knowledge. So you have a, a stronger that's, that's team great. together. Thanks, that's really helpful. And, and I think it just demonstrates how flexible the cooperative model is that it allows different ways of working, um, but still adhering to those general values and principles and, and, and ways of collaborating. Um, you've got your hand up, Steve. Do, do you want to come in on that as well? Uh, yeah, just to briefly uh, explain our route. Um, we were four freelancers that came together and rather than create another organization building in our organizations, we just formed a company and we we're the four directors of that company. And uh, we we changed our articles of association to become a cooperative. The models model articles are available from Co-ops UK, they're really helpful. And so everybody that joins since uh, becomes another director of the company and has the same one share. And we had a very interesting conversation when we started about um, pay, and how we get money out and we, and we work in data and we try to make formulas about well if i work this many hours you work and then the end we just said let's all just pay, be paid, paid the same so so we have we have flat equal pay because it was a it was the easiest decision to make and we've kept that in the six years since so everybody's paid the same uh, relative to the fte within our organization that's Thank great you. thanks Stephen. um i think there were some questions there about legal forms and uh, there isn't time in this webinar to touch on web on legal forms, but I am doing um, a webinar in a couple of weeks' time, and we will be covering uh, legal forms um, a little bit more in that one. So check out our website to attend that one. Um, but yeah, generally you can be any legal form and still be a cooperative. It's not your legal form that defines you as a cooperative. It's how you kind of demonstrate um, that you meet the values and principles, and how you're owned by the mem members, and how you share your profits and everything else. So. Um, but we haven't got time to touch on, on that now. Um, I think there were also some questions generally about um, how, you know, you kind of meet each other and, and formed each other and found each other. And obviously, I guess there's different ways and, and there's usually some kind of community before you start these things. But I think, as Stephen said in the chat, he, he 
he promotes and recruits much in the way as any other company might do um, in that respect. And But I guess having that kind of collaboration and wider support from your community allows you to reach out maybe in better ways than you could as a normal company. So we're, we're kind of running out of time. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to check if there's any more quick questions that I can give a quick answer to or, or our speakers can. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, it's too difficult to go into all the legal sides, but um, but yeah, do check out. Um, we've got a recorded webinar as well on the website that covers legal forms um, and Cooperatives UK and The Hive can support you with that. So I'm just gonna share this final slide. Hopefully this will work. Everyone else did so brilliantly, so I hope don't let the side down. Um, so everyone see that? So this is just um, a final slide to say that if you do want to get support, we have the High Business Support Programme. It's our national programme delivered in partnership with the Cooperative Bank and, and, and delivered by Cooperatives UK. Um, so anyone who's thinking of starting up a cooperative, um, you can apply online. Um, we're open all the time for applications and we have monthly panels. Um, also on that website, you'll find other funded programmes that we um, support cooperatives and existing cooperatives, not just New Start. Um, and we also have some great resources on the website that help you think about starting your business, um, a step-by-step -step guide that takes you through business formation and, and legal and finance and everything else. So um, do head to that page for more information um, and resources and to get support. So I hope a final thank you to um, Asia and all our speakers, Stephen, and John for joining us today. Um, it's been a great session and I hope you've learned lots of things. I'm, 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 I think I'm finishing ahead of time here, so sorry about that. Um, so yeah, if there is a last question, I'll take it. Um, but I think um, hopefully what you've seen from this session is that the cooperative model works in all sectors, um, in all kinds of ways. It's really flexible and it's essentially there to meet the needs of those that care most about the cooperative and the users and the people in the community they work in. Um, and we've shown that we're much more resilient as a model, particularly during these last couple of years. Um, that's been dem demonstrated again and again by um, the co-op model and the ways that, that we work. Um, so thanks very much for joining us. I'm just um, going to stop sharing that slide and just check if anybody else wanted to say anything else um, or if there were any last minute questions. Just checking this, the chat. Um, there are links in the chat as well if you want to check those out. Um, and just to confirm again that this um, webinar has been recorded, it will be sent out to everyone that's registered and it will be put online as well. So if you did miss the beginning, if you joined a bit later, you'll be able to see it from the beginning. Um, so I think I think we're on time. We're ready to finish. Um, Aisha, is there anything else you want to add or anyone else? No. I think thank you so much, okay. everyone. It was fantastic and looking forward to keeping in touch with, with the rest of the guys. Thanks very much then. And we'll finish there. <laughs>